<laughs> all right, so today we're going to be talking about uh, all that he said, she said, and how I don't think we really need it, to be honest, uh, how we can make more action-packed conversations, how we can make our dialogue more dynamic. So what is the point of dialogue? First, if you ever take a master's class on this, they'll say four things. One, it's to activize and dramatize conflict, essentially a fancy way of saying, move the plot forward. Move the plot forward, okay? So we can also provide exposition, and this exposition can be kind of any kind of background uh, information that we need. This can explain backstory. I'm a total proponent of explaining backstory through dialogue instead of using flashbacks. I think flashbacks should be abolished, and you can do a better way of, of uh, having flashbacks or, or having the necessary information that you would get from a flashback by using dialogue. Also, it should convey subtext. You know, uh, what are the personalities of that character? What are the character traits? What are the idiosyncrasies of that character? And it should definitely establish a clear voice. Right? If you ask the New York editors about dialogue, it should pass three criteria. First one being, of course, advancing the plot. Should reveal relevant information about the characters. And it should help understand the relationship between the characters. Of course, this is all like basic and unnecessary, and we're going to get into examples of this in a little bit. So we're going to take a look at a scene. I gave you all a piece of paper here. This is from, this is a little excerpt, just a very, very short ex excerpt of, from my novel, uh, The Trials of the Court, which is like science fiction fantasy. But this is just a regular conversation taking place at a dinner table. Okay, so this could work in any kind of situation. So this scene just happens to be uh, a family gathered around at a dinner table. So... I have two examples for you, example A and example B. What I want you to, uh, I, I, I put it here because I didn't know what the like space was gonna be like, but since you all have it, you can just look at it on your sheets. But what I want to know is which one do you think is better? So take some time and look at both of them, and then we're gonna, then we're gonna vote. I'll give you a minute. Okay, so how many of you vote for example A? Anyone? Uh, we haven't finished yet. Oh, you haven't finished yet. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm not sure how I'm going to get into a short 
Okay, have we finished? Yes. Okay, so example A, all my example A people, how many of you think example A? Don't be shy. One, two, two, okay. How about uh, example B? Uh, okay, a lot more example, a lot more hands for example B. Why? Uh, can someone tell me why you think example B? Yeah. I mean, I actually like example B, oh. but I can guess why people would like example B. Is why? That there's the omission of the kind of explicit saying blah blah said or blah blah asked. Okay. The there is yes. And back there, I have one. Um, we chose B because I thought that's what that, um, like the one and three, or the third one, it, it won't change topics. Mm. So I think that like the author should leave that the reader to make that conclusion on their own. Right. Um, okay. And so I think it is better without that extra condition. Okay. And Misha, did you have anything? Uh, um? I was actually going to say it was the last line that that I liked. From oh, you liked that. I did. Oh. Okay. <laughs> What changed? So, dismally went to dismayed. Dismally went to dismayed. We took out the ly, right? We don't like adverbs. We're writers. Okay. Mutely got deleted. He just, I, I don't like adverbs. I, I just, okay. Jamal asked, got deleted. Why? Well, because Zane's thinking, no, Jamal, if only you knew. So, I already know that the character who said that beforehand is Jamal. I don't need to have that dialogue take in there anymore. And his mom changed topics. Well, if it's Zane, if it's Jamal in the first one, then Zane, then it has to be the mom. So again, I don't need that take. But wait, these are just common good writing practices. Well, I thought you were gonna teach me something new. I am. So, our new stuff that we're actually going to be talking about is action tags. I don't think a lot of people use action tags in writing, and, and action tags or action beats, if you want to refer to them as that, are ways that we can make our writing way, way better. And we're going to take a look at, and we're going to take a look at how we can do that throughout this presentation. So what is an action beat or an action tag? Well, it's a phrase that typically stands alone in a sentence that breaks up dialogue. It's going to give us more information about a character in a scene and it can go before, after, or in between a phrase of dialogue. So let's look at some examples here. Well, uh, first of all, it's a more active way of showing, of showing. And that's what we want to do, right? We want to show our, our scenes. We don't want to just say our scenes. So before, she chewed her lip. It could work. In between. Are you serious? She raised an eyebrow. Oh. That would never work. He's such an idiot. Peter slammed the door and threw himself on my couch. Now, these are just like, there's no context to them. But once we start getting into how to revise the thing that we just saw, you'll see how these are better. And there's four reasons why we would use action beats. They are one, to convey body language. Two, for characterization and improve characterization. Three, dispel like a setting. And four, world building. Okay, so when we think about body language, we think about how the scene is occurring. And when we have a conversation with someone, when we have communication with someone, what are the things we need for communication? What three things comprise communication? Eye gaze. Mm. Mm. Right. Okay, what, what, what other things? <laughs> what else? Intonation. Intonation's one. Well, we need words, okay? We need words. <laughs> we need tone. And we need body language, okay? These are the three things that comprise communication. Now, which one of these things, 
Which one of these things do you think is the most important one? Words. 80% of Which is the most important? So, how many of you say words? It is actually words. It's a false content. Okay. How about tone? Well, especially here in China, right? Okay. If you say the wrong ma, you could get punched. Okay. And body language. How about body language? Okay. Okay, so we have three. Th oh, okay. So, it is actually body language. Now, I'm going to prove this to you. See? Prove it. I have. <laughs> <laughs> you did this whole presentation with nothing but your body language. We would not know what you were talking about. We need your words. <laughs> right. I'm not saying that words aren't important. I'm saying that body language is more important. And body language makes up 55% of communication, according to okay. Dr. Albert Mehebrian. 38% <laughs> is voice and tone, and only 7% is spoken words. Mm. Now again, if you don't believe me, well, I have another thing for you. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope this works. And then she had to actually do the commercial, and obviously, do we do we think vitamin D vegemin tastes good? Yeah. No. no. How do we know that? Because it tastes like candy, I guess. But does it really taste mm -hmm. like candy? No, right? Because her body language mm -hmm. shows that it does not taste like candy. Body language. Okay. Anyway, so now, as you watch this scene, uh, examine her body language, mm. <laughs> and I want to know what you think uh, of her. Afterwards. Dum dum, listless. You poop out at parties. Are you unpopular? The answer to all your problems is in this little bottle. A uh, little bottle. <laughs> You can spoon your way to hell. <laughs> 
She got a little slurred and, and, and confused, and her, her <coughs> facial features even showed us showed us uh, how she was acting. And again, it's the same words, essentially, but different of how we perceive it. And that is why words really don't matter. And why... <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> words do not matter! <laughs> You knew you don't. So, some resources to help with this. Well, I would. Oh, 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 just a if you. No, no. Sorry. I would love to just watch you all day, but I. Okay, anyway. So, resources to help. One, you should just people watch more. If you want to understand how natural conversation and dialogue works, then you should just people watch more and, and understand their idiosyncrasies and what they do. But. An even better resource that I think every single individual in this room should buy, and I'm not even an affiliate, I just love this resource so much, is Angela Ackerman's The Emotional Thesaurus. Okay? This is a fantastic book, and we're going to, I'm going to give you a little bit of a preview of this book when we go and revise this scene. Okay? But she also has other thesaurus books, which are great. The Negative Trait Thesaurus, The Positive Trait Thesaurus, The Urban Setting Thesaurus. The emotional wounds that source for those really broken down individuals. Okay, this is a like these are and, and once once you see the inside of this, you'll see how how complex and and how just like detailed they are. They are great. Interesting. Okay, so two characterization characterization. So we have to think about the characters' personalities. If they're brown noser, right? Maybe they flash a simpering smile. If they're shy, maybe they avoid eye contact or make it to only look away. Their attributes, sighing, John ran a hand through his thick, dark hair. Oh, I have to do. May's green eyes glittered in excitement. I got accepted. So maybe she got into a university. Maybe she got into a program. Who knows? We don't know. But, the, I, but now I know that she has green eyes. Hmm. I have to say May has green eyes. Third, setting. Now, we've all shared some good times together, right, this past weekend. We had some laughs, but now i got to get really, really personal with you all. And we're going to get personal. This is a, this is a deep question, and, and I need to ask everyone here, how many of you have info-dumped sometime in your life? <laughs> I have. I feel like everyone has committed this horrible... Horrible sin of writing. Info dumping. Info dumping is kind of like uh, Tinder. Yeah, you just put a lot of information uh, in this uh, platform and people just swipe through it because they don't want to read it. Okay? So, info dumping is something that we can avoid when we use more action packed dialogue. These action beats can help us eliminate large walls of text and can bring readers into the scene. For example, I'll see you soon. She wrapped her arms around herself against the mountain chill. Be careful. Where's the setting taking place? Well, it's she's in a mountain area, right? And there's going to be some danger involved. Debris deluged upon them after a nearby explosion. The sergeant covered his head. Get this one back to the medics. 
Where is this individual? War, yeah, probably in the trenches. There's an active war going on. And I didn't have to say any of that. It's just through the, the sergeant covered his head and this debris that's deluging upon this individual. And, and we know that someone just got injured as well because get this one back to the medics, right? So when we are looking at how to advance our um, dialogue, I don't need to say he said and she said. We know that the sergeant said this. I didn't have to say the sergeant said. <coughs> also, we can use it for world building, number four, right? Every story needs this, but especially if you are a fantasy writer, a sci-fi writer, or a historical writer, you're going to need this even more, world building. And, and so doing this, doing this well means that we don't have to info dump. And we're going to look at some examples of this. So I'm going to give you a little, like, Scene, and then you're going to tell me maybe what you can find out about the, the society. Okay, so what do the following reveal? Welcome, my lady. He bowed his head and brought his right hand over to his heart. It's an honor. Courtesy. Courtesy, okay. Hierarchical yeah. oldie wobbly power structures. Uh huh. It also reveals this nice term called adequate. So this is the this must be this the form of greeting the form of greeting in this society wherever this place is. How about this next one? She waved her hand over the doorway, revealing glittering rooms. Enter with valor. Magic powers. Yeah. Okay. So it does reveal a magic system. What's important about this magic system? Room base accessible too. Huh? It's like. Uh-huh. Accessible. Values follow. Also. Oh, it's non-wand based? Like, you're waving your hand? Sure. To... It's non-wand based. It's also, you don't have to verbalize it. Mm -hmm. You don't have to say any magic words. You can just do magic. So this is a magical message and also reveals a magical system in place. And again, I'm not saying anything about he said and she said. Next, we have, and who are you? The bald man glanced up from the holographic map he was studying. What does this reveal? Future. Technology, yeah, absolutely. So we know that this is going to be taking place somewhere in the future, right? And probably it's going to be a sci-fi sci novel, I would assume. But again, we don't need to know that the bald man said this because the bald, we already can, we already can know that. From, he, from it being right after the dialogue. So, with these kind of techniques now in our pocket, we're going to revise that previous example with some action takes. And I have, I'm gonna give you all the good one, actually. Okay, so if you wanna take one, pass it back. Take one, pass it back. I think I have enough for everyone, but if you need one, I have more. Make sure, I hope everyone has one. If you need one, let me know. Any more? All right, so, so we're going to take a look at this letter C one, and this is um, the most recent one in the book. So we go from Zane said dismay. Let's look at uh, let's look at this little section because this is an emotion. So I want, I'm going to pull out my Angela, Acker, uh, Angela Ackerman's emotional thesaurus. I look at this as, oh, she's got a lot of adjectives. She's got a lot of adjectives. Adoration, agitation. Which one do I want? Dismayed. To me, kind of like, which one would you pick? I, I don't got dismayed, but, but I'm going to get, try to get close. 
I would maybe pick defeat. like defeat. Yeah, mm -hmm. defeat. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then this is what you get in the book. It's amazing. Again, highly recommend this resource to all writers. So you get physical signs of defeat. You get mental responses of defeat, internal sensations of defeat. You get cues of long-term defeat. May escalate to depression, shame, humiliation. You get writer's tips to reveal more about defeat. Okay, so this is like, again, inside inside the book. This is what, you, what you're gonna find. Um, so we're going to now, and this is for every single like emotion, right? So we're gonna take some of this and we're going to apply it. So, where you at goes now, uh -huh, goes to, as you can see, this. So Zane, where are you at in Gaza now? Jamal unfolded a linen and pushed it into the collar of his shirt. So maybe you unfold it. Okay. Zane threw his, and then Zane, the brother, threw his linen aside and sighed. Still just a trainer, Kendall didn't pass today. Okay, so what does, what is different here? Right, we have this line. This line is different. And what does this show? What does this show about Jamal? Etiquette, yeah, it shows etiquette. He's unflustered. He's more organized, perhaps. He's more proper. He wants to, you know, keep, keep clean. And also, the fact that he has a dress shirt, perhaps, shows that he's in a higher position. And which we'll look at in, uh, in the later in the conversation. We'll see that he is in a higher position. Okay. Now, if we say Zane threw his linen aside and side, okay, so he's sitting down at the table and throws it. Just still just a trainer. Kendall didn't pass today. Okay, so what is this showing? Yeah, frustrated. frustrated. I don't need to say mm. dismayed. Discouragement. Yeah. Mm. Right? I don't need to say dismayed. I don't need to say that he's he's defeated. And so, using, again, this Angela Ackerman's thing, what I did is I took some of these physical signs and put them in here. If we go back, we see a long, low sigh could express some sort of defeat. We see lackluster movements, right? Like... And we also see uh, slumping into a chair. I didn't even say that he's slumping into a chair, but you could probably imagine that he slumps into his chair. And that's just so much better than actually having to explain that. You can show it. And you don't need to say it. It's so much more powerful than Zane said dismayed. Would you agree? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so let's go on to this next part. In this next little section, what am I trying to show here? Good. Impatience is definitely one of them, yep. How, how do we know that he's impatient? Yeah, he's reaching for food, right? Which also shows he is hungry. hungry. Good. Hungry. Impatient. Uh-huh. And also that he's criticizing Kindle. That, that's a little bit of impatience. Scrawny kid with no muscle. Sure. I mean, I he doesn't want to talk about it, right? So we have avoidance. And how about the, the mom and Zane? What does that show between those two? There's a power dynamic there. Uh-huh. Okay, power dynamic. And also, does... Yeah, religion, right. Faith versus lack of faith. Zane's mom wants to pray. Zane doesn't want to pray. Okay? So how can we make this better? Well, let's try. Let's look. So this... I, I highlighted some, some of the things that, that got changed. You'll notice that... I don't have scrawny kid with no muscle anymore. I have scrawny kid, no muscle. Just very short sentences um, that actually aren't even sentences, but it shows his, he just wants to get out of the conversation. So I don't need to say, I don't want to talk about it because I'm showing that through how I'm using the dialogue. Okay, also hungry. I don't need to say he's hungry. If he's reaching for food, that shows he's hungry. Again, things that we can just X out. <laughs> And we're all about 
Xing out things here in the in the editing world. Okay, so um, that right editors would be happy with these changes. Oh yes. Okay, very good. <laughs> also, now what can we tell about the mother? She's very conscientious. Mm -hmm. Okay. She likes order. She likes order, sure. She has kind of a routine, right? And also, she takes her faith very seriously. We have to pray before we eat. Okay? And Zane, does Zane have faith? No. Mute devotion. No. Yeah, not so much. So, yeah, mute devotion. When I think of mute, I think of, well, silence, right? So there is no devotion. It, it's, it's absent of devotion. And this is, it, it, uh, throughout the rest of the series, like Zane's struggle to find faith. That's his like big character arc. So I'm I'm touching on a key theme that's in the novel throughout this. And so throughout this is a five book series. So throughout the series, like he finds his faith slowly but but surely. And and that's a big like takeaway and and something that you need to keep in mind when you are writing your own books. Okay. So, what am I trying to show in this next part? Oh, Michael, four minutes. Okay, yeah. We're almost done, actually. What am I trying to show in this next part? Isn't it really helpful if you close to a trusting relationship with Jamal? Okay. I'm actually showing nothing. It's complete chit chat. It is pointless. <laughs> and we don't want that. We don't want that because we want to advance the plot, right? We need to advance the plot. So, if I was to change it, then I would change it to this. Now, what am I trying to show here? Well, you'll get their Z. I don't have, you'll get their Z. You'll get their Z. Z, now a nickname. We see a closer family bond. The Senate on Mistral. Okay, well, what does the show about Jamal's position? He is a senator. senator. Yeah, he's higher class, which means... There's, there's family status. I'm showing their family status. I'm world building at the same time. So we know that Jamal is already a, already a uh, you know, higher class position. He's a guy dress dress shirt. He's orderly. Um, probably means he's analytical, I would assume. And he's a senator on this wherever Mistral is. We know that's where the Senate is. So I'm doing a lot here in just a little bit of dialogue. Hmm. And again, throughout this whole thing, the only dialogue tank that I has is have is he lied because that one well, you, you kind of I guess need because you would yeah but I had no he said or she said <laughs> now I'm not saying that uh, so the bad good better right but the big takeaway is that there's no best way to do dialogue but there are certainly better ways to do dialogue and everything in moderation um, pro writing aid actually like shows this said and ask are the the number one and number two things that you should use. You, you don't really uh, need to use like, he confounded, and by all God, do not say like he smiled, because it's so hard to smile. Actually, you can't smile something. So, um, <laughs> but it's, they recommend to use dialogue takes less than 20% of the, of the time. And action takes can advance plot, enhance characterization and world build, there's a very nice quote in my book that goes, um, words are water, actions are ice. And what do I mean by that? Well, I'm, I mean that words can take on any kind of form. Words are water. They are just viscous, right? You can put them in a bottle, you can put them in a cup. Actions are ice. They're more solid. They're tangible. And as the old saying goes, right, actions speak louder than words. So that's why you should be having your action takes speak for you. Thank you. Uh, my resources to recommend, again, are just pro writing aid. I would say if you want like grammar help and editing help, and definitely the emotional thesaurus. Oh my gosh, what a what a book that is. Questions? Okay, uh, I'm sure Mike will answer any questions in the lobby if you have any. Uh, there's copies of Visions if you missed our zine launch.